Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video and today I'm taking a look at another metal build Gundam figure. This right here is a new take on the absolutely awesome Gundam Estrella and this is the Gundam Estrella Type X Finsternis. As you can see, it's badass black with metallic purple and gold. This is a cool design and it's only going to get a whole lot cooler once we get all of the equipment onto it. Anyway, as usual, this video right here would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Baie. Every time I do one of these metal builds, it's from them. So if you're looking for some rare Gundam figures, rare Gundam kits, or just a Gundam you can't get your hand on, I guarantee you will find it down there in that link through Baie. Now let's check it out. So as for the box on this particular figure, it's exactly the same as every metal build we've seen so far. They're all around the same size. The box art shows the figure in a whole host of different positions and poses and this doesn't even scratch the surface because once we get this box open and get everything taken out this thing rocks an entire armory a whole bunch of stuff we've seen before with different double o metal build figures and a whole lot more i am impressed there's more in here than it even shows on the box so not only do we have a badass color scheme on a pretty cool gundam which is the astrea we also have a whole bunch of weapons which is four shields two gn swords two bazookas, two pistols, a sniper rifle, missile pod, even more. There is a complete Gundam 00 armory in here. So once we get the Metal Build Gundam Estrella Type X Finsternis out of the box, this is mind-blowingly beautiful. I will mention though right off the bat, this is exactly what we would have seen time and time again with the different variants of the Estrella and the Exia metal builds. They're all the same figure technically, with a whole bunch of parts changed. So if you've got a Gundam Estrella or a Gundam Exia in your collection, well, this is going to be pretty much the same. If you don't and you're looking to get one of these particular figures, it might be useful to you to know that these are technically all the same figure at their core, just with different colors and accessories, if that helps you choose. Now, as for the Finsternis right here, this looks absolutely gorgeous. This is matte black with gold and metallic purple. We've got the usual ridiculously high standard of detail on here. That is a lot of decals, multiple shades of the same colors. We've got a kind of brownie black on black, and it really does add a whole bunch of dimension and highlights all of the killer detail on here. On top of that, we do have die-cast metal parts. There is no mistaking the sheen of die-cast metal. Once again, this is mainly down towards the end of the legs, keeping this nice and centered in every pose. Bottom heavy, so it won't fall over. Once again, I will mention, this is just the Estrella with a new dark visual overhaul, and just is an understatement. The Estrella is an amazing looking mobile suit. If you wanna see what the blue and white version looks like, in action, well, I did review that one too, so you can check that out. And I will mention at this point, this kit is essentially naked. This comes with so much equipment that's going to change so much about it. So let's jump right on in and check out the absolute armory this figure comes with. So jumping into the accessories, and I didn't lay all of these out like I usually do, because there is just so many in here and it would become a mess. I think it's a little simpler just to see them inside of the box. There's a lot of weapons, a lot of extra hands, Adapter, armor, a whole bunch of things. Let's check them out. First off in here, we do have two variants of the head. That is the standard looking Estrella Gundam looking head right here. But we also have an alternate version, which is this one. This lengthens the head, completely removes the usual visual looks we get from a Gundam and makes this look like a more bestial, robotic, almost alien machine. You can actually see the Estrella's head from below, so this is more like a visor as opposed to a brand new head. But it does look phenomenal and we've got a nice big old clear purple part right in the front of that. As well as two choices for the head, we also have two choices for the butt. The first one is a very standard looking Estrella ass. We've got two moving rear skirting armors either side and onto those you can attach the included beam sabers. We do have two beam saber handles in here, four choices of beams, that is too long, too short, and when these are not in use, they can be attached onto this butt flap right here, and they can move back and forth ever so slightly while I'm there. If that isn't enough Gundam butt for you, we also have this alternate version. Now, this is a lot more heavy duty. We have some die-cast metallic articulated arms on this, and it adds a whole lot of mass. As for what these arms are for, these are designed specifically for shields, and we have four shields in here. 
The first are a pair of Astraea style shields, we would have seen them before in another video. If you have not seen these before, these open up ever so nicely at four different points. These are ridiculously detailed and look great. Around in the back we have two different attachment points and you can use either of these in whichever way that you want. I'm gonna go with the manual and use the one the manual suggests. And this is what they look like attached. Now that we're adding more and more stuff on, it's looking less and less like a Gundam and more bestial. If that is not enough shields for you, in here we also get to GNX or Jinx style GN shields. Once again, these are incredibly detailed. We've got this little push mechanism, which allows this front segment to move out and that can spin the full 360 degrees. We have a fold out peg on the back this can attach onto any hard point on the figure. We have some on the legs, so they can attach onto the legs. We have some on the rear of the forearm, so it can attach on there. And we have adapters for adding hard points to the waist as well. If for some reason you don't like just attaching them directly onto the forearm like this, we also have some adapters in here for attaching them into the usual GN slot on this Exia or Astraea style forearm. They just pop in like so, have a hard point for the shield to attach to, and then the shield just attaches onto the side of the arm instead of the front. Now my personal favorite thing to do with these shields is to use these included adapters. So these are plastic arms, a lot of nice articulation on these. And what these are for using for is attaching shield to shield. So you can attach either Jinx shield to Jinx shield, Astraea shield to Astraea shield, or what we're going to do here is attach Astraea shield to Jinx shield. So now we've got a kind of a system of shields attached round back. Now later on I will mention that we do have another adapter, actually I'll mention it right now. We have another adapter that attaches either side of the GN drive up back. This is exactly the same as the arms that we see on the arse of this thing, except they're up on the shoulder, so if you want these like big wings, you can do that too. So many options in here. Most things are modular, and that is kick ass. Now that we've loaded a whole bunch of stuff onto it, it's time to get this up onto the stand. This is the same high quality stand we see with absolutely every metal build. If you want to see more about these, you can check out my other metal build reviews, but they're nice and strong, lots of movable parts. And this one features a very beautiful purple design on it. And one interesting aspect about this is it shows the full lineup of weaponry down bottom, kind of like a video game, but the last two say unknown. So I'm assuming we're going to be seeing an expansion pack in future for the Finsternis right here. So now moving into the weaponry and we'll be starting off with the close combat weapons that we have in here. First off, we've got two of my favorite weapons of all time. These are Proto GN Swords. Basically what would have come before Exia's GN Sword and we would have seen these before with another metal build Astraea as well. These are all blade, no gun, and the blade seamlessly moves forward just like so swings forward ever so nicely. The paint on here matching the mobile suit, looking fantastic. To attach these, we do have this little included tool for removing the rear of the forearms. Very, very handy, works great. They slot into the bottom of the forearm like so. We've got a second attachment point up top, so these lock in so well. And honestly, this looks so cool. Two Proto GN swords. This is perfect for a dark, over-the-top, close combat mobile suit. It looks killer. This is like some kind of Death or Shinigami Gundam. Honestly, killer loadout in here. And going from wild to essentially wilder, this right here is the GN Hammer. I haven't seen a weapon this unique in quite some time. This is cool. The purple on here is translucent, catches the light so nicely. This slots into the holding hands very, very neatly, holds on perfectly. And we also do have an included pliable heavy duty wire in here. This uh, basically makes this a little bit more uh, long range than it was already. And you can attach this on just like so, end to end, and that is what it looks like attached. This holds perfectly, it's a strong enough wire to hold this in any position you put it in. And this thing looks incredible. I have to say again, that translucent purple looks so, so good. This is a cool throwback to an old school Oryx 782 weapon, and I adore it. I will also mention we do have a hard point on the side of this, so if you want to attach it onto the waist, you can do just that. Moving now onto the longer ranged weaponry, and first off, we have a pair of beam pistols, just like we would have seen with Junimus. This is pretty much an Estrella loadout that kind of has a bit of a Junimus vibe. We've got a sniper rifle and these pistols. These are two-tone black with a purple sight. They look fantastic. 
These can be held in the hands, dual wielded, because we have two in here. Just like we would have seen with Junimez as well, we do have a pair of massive holsters for keeping these in. They just pop in like so, close up very neatly, and these also have hard points attached onto them, and usually, you can stick them wherever you want, but usually, they attach onto the calves of the legs, just like so. Moving up a little bit in caliber, and we've got ourselves the NGN Bazooka. Once again, the same great colors as the mobile suit itself, lots of extraordinary detail. This can extend just by pulling it open. We've got some moving side handles, that is one on either side. We have a fully removable ammo magazine round back with detail, including bullets. This attaches on using the exact same hand we used for the pistols. It holds on perfect, and this looks outstanding. Once again, this thing has a literal armory in the box. Next up in here, then, we've got the GN Beam Rifle. Once again, this does look great. A very unique looking GN rifle, definitely. We have a shifting side-to-side -side stock mechanism in here. This is to use it in either the left hand or the right hand. Every weapon in here can be used in either or. In the usual Gundam 00 way, this attaches in a two-point way. That is into the hand with the handle, and the rear stock part attaches into the forearm. So this locks in good and tight. Just like pretty much every weapon we've seen so far in here, we do have a hard point adapter, so this can attach into the hard points. This one in particular can attach into this adapter right here for mounting it on the waist, a la Gundam Exia. Moving through those long range weapons because we have so, so many, next up is the GN hand missile. This looks great again, we've got a fold out handle that comes out from the back, a rotating hard point in the middle part of the underside, this can be held in the hand just like this right here, or even cooler, you can flip back that handle and use the hard point to mount this into any hard point. My favorite being the rear of the forearm for some hands-free use. There's a little sliding mechanism on the underside that when you push this up, actually pushes open all of the canister ends for you, so you don't have to be messing around with it too much. This is very, very simple, but very, very effective. No messing around, and it looks great. Even more long-range weapons in here, and next up is the GN Launcher. This is big, beefy, beautiful, and once again, matching color scheme to the mobile suit itself. Like I've seen on some other metal builds, this has some silver paint that's recessed into the weapon, which really catches the light. This is a nice paint technique, and I really think it brings an extra dimension to the surface of the weaponry. That is cool. This weapon features a side-to-side -side swinging handle, Around back, we have a swinging, rotating connection point. Next up, then, we've got this flip-out cover section that actually covers up that other attachment point when it is not in use. And speaking of it being in use, you've got two options in here. First of which is to just use it with the cover over the connection point, pop it into the hand just like so, and just kind of used in this free form loosey-goosey aiming kind of way. The other way is just like we would have seen with the last Estrella we took a look at. That is you pop off the neck clavicle and it mounts into the clavicle. Now I'm not going to do this on this figure because it has very long, fragile feeling clavicles so I don't want to mess around with them too much, but it can mount in there and I assume that's to get some extra power. The last of the long range weaponry we have in here then is the GN Sharpshooter. Just like everything we've seen so far, this rifle looks amazing. Matching color scheme yet again, reflective side up front. We've got a moving side handle, a moving rear connection part for attaching into the forearm, and we have a flip out connection segment just on the bottom of the rifle. Once again, this attaches in that 00 style two point attachment that is the handle into the hand, and the rear stock segment attaches into the forearm for a rock solid go nowhere hold. In here as well, we also have two different bipods. So both of these are completely poseable, they swing out. The only difference between the two is the length. One is the extended version and the other is the contracted version. These both attach into the bottom of the rifle just like so and can be flipped out whenever you want them. Also included in here is this little adapter segment. Now this is used on the bottom of that swinging little adapter bit. And according to the instructions, this can be used with the metal build Junimez Repair 3. You can also use it with the Gundam 007 Sword and the Exia Repair 4. So yeah, when it comes to the accessories inside this box, this is way more than I thought came in here. A lot of the images of this particular figure showed it with mainly the rifle and the shields. I didn't know it came with so, so much. This thing is ridiculously fun.
So now moving into the articulation, and I'm just going to kind of gloss over this a little bit because we saw it already before with the other version of the Metal Build Astraea. So if you actually want to see every single joint, all of the detail about this, go check out that review. And this one, I'm just going to mention the overview of it. So this is an incredible figure. It's rock solid. It does have a die cast build, which means it's heavy in all the right places and it is good and strong in all the right places. Overall, the articulation is fantastic. We've got a lot of nice expressive elements. The shoulder joints are very nice. The ab crunch is extremely nice. The knee bend, ankles, the waist, everything is great. There is nothing I could say anything negative about. If you want real over the top, ridiculous poses, this may not pull them off, but it'll definitely get you everything you want when it comes to the usual mecha poses. I'll also mention once you throw on all of the shields and equipment, that does add in a whole lot more to kind of play around with when you're posing it. So on the whole, absolutely incredible. When it comes to the Metal Build Gundam Astraea Type X Finsternis, this is an absolutely incredible and dark, beautiful figure right here. If you want a Gundam that looks ridiculously dark, awesome, and comes with a literal armory of weapons, this is the one you want to go for. It might be a little bit hard to get, might be a little bit expensive, but it is worth every penny. You've got the purple on black and gold color scheme, you've got the over-the-top Gundam Estrella look and equipment set. This is ridiculous. If you love Gundam 00, especially the fringe mobile suits from the mangas, like the various Estrellas that are out there, you just wanted them a little darker, this is what you're gonna be looking for. It's rock solid, high quality, and it packs in so many weapons. Shields, double GN swords, a whole bunch of weapons, it's got it all. Awesome, awesome figure. So as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam figure and Gundam model kit reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video and none of these videos would be possible without each and every one of you watching these videos, including those of you who are supporting me on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Van Fon, Orgy59061, Lawrence Seahack, Kill Me Inc., Joseph Kukluk, Joe, Gunpla UK Limited, Global Frequency Studios, Forsetti, Caleb Engelhart, and Craig Jerry.